Hello everyone, I am Professor Anish Vora and I welcome you all in this video lecture. During this video lecture, we will study about the design of cylindrical rotor. Currently, you know that uh, we are running a series of video lectures on design of synchronous machine. In previous lectures, we have studied about uh, rotor design of salient pole type of construction. But now, in case of turbo alternator, we will start with uh, design of uh, cylindrical uh, rotor winding. In next lectures, we will study about uh, further parameters of rotor as well as stator of uh, turbo alternator. So we start with uh, design of cylindrical uh, rotor. Let me show you one uh, sample of uh, how a rotor winding is uh, slot, uh, accommodated in the slots given. Let us see. The rotor winding is not uh, concentrated but it is distributed in the slots. Concentric multi-ton coils are used and that we will saw in the figure. The number of wound slots should be an integer which is multiple of 4 that is uh, either 16, 20 or 24. The slot pitch it is so chosen that uh, undesirable harmonics are not introduced in the flux density wave. So this way one sample of the rotor winding is shown. Number of slots 1, 2, 3 and 4, 5, 6 and uh, this is our coil spun. So part of the core is slotted and part of the core is kept unslotted. This is the overhang and this is our core. So this way we have one of the sample of how rotor winding is wound in the slots. So now let us start uh, our actual uh, design work. We start with the full load field magnetomotive force. The first step in uh, rotor winding design that is uh, to find how much magnetomotive force this winding is going to be generate. So the required flux and required flux density. So accordingly we will design our uh, ampere turns. Based on the ampere turns, we will find number of turns and field current. So, full load field magnetomotive force, that is the uh, ampere turns at the full load. F, that is for the field and full load. Normally, we take, that is uh, two times to the ampere turns of the armature. That is our normal practice to take uh, twice to ampere turns of the armature winding where ATA that is a armature magnetomotive force and that can be calculated as 2.7 multiplied by I phase multiplied by T phase multiplied by KW and divided by P where I phase that is a phase current T phase that is number of turns per phase and KW that is a stator winding factor and P is number of poles. Uh, in case of uh, synchronous alternator, stator winding, uh, stator uh, design uh, remain common either it is salient pole type of uh, rotor construction or it is a, a smooth cylindrical type of rotor construction. So ampere turn of armature that can be estimated or can be calculated with the uh, available data and it is as per this given equation. So once we have ampere turns of the armature is available, then based on that data, we can able to calculate ampere turns or magnetomotive force of the field winding. Now voltage across each field coil. So that is EF and that is 0.8 to 0.85 times 
VE, VE that is the excitation voltage and divided by number of poles P. Excitation voltage normally it is uh, known or uh, from the customer end it should be fixed. Normally it is uh, around uh, 125 volt but it can be uh, variable, it can be a different based on the different requirement. 15 to 20 percent voltage are uh, consumed by the filled rheostat or the starters and 80 to 85 percent of excitation voltage will reach to the filled coil. So if we find the voltage across each filled coil and that is EF that is 0.8 to 0.85 percent VE and divided by number of poles P. So VE that is uh, excitation voltage and it is uh, known. So voltage across each field coil we can easily able to calculate. Then uh, next required parameter that is the length of mean turn of the field winding. Some of the design steps are exactly equal to the design steps we did during designing of uh, rotor winding of salient pole type of uh, rotor construction. So length of mean turn of field winding. So that is uh, equal to 2 times L. L is active length of the winding plus 2.3 times tau and plus 0.24 fix uh, clearance we take. We take a uh, active length in both the slot that is 2L then uh, for the overhang we have a calculation 2.3 multiplied, multiplied by tau tau can be taken as a pole pitch or in this case we take uh, as a effective span of the coil and uh, plus 24, 0.24 so this way we can estimate our length of the mean turn of field winding. Based on this data again we can calculate or we can estimate our area cross section area of the field conductor. So our next step that is cross section area of the field conductor. We just calculated voltage across each field coil but we have another equation for voltage across each field coil and that is EF that is uh, again product of field current and uh, multiplied by resistance of the field winding. So field current and resistance of the field winding is still not known but we can substitute equation for resistance of the field conductor. So that is IF multiplied by rho multiplied by LMTF multiplied by TF and divided by AF. So LMTF that is the length of the mean turn of the field winding, field conductor. TF that is total number of uh, turns of the field uh, winding and AF that is the cross section area of the field conductor. So IF multiplied by TF, the product of uh, IF and TF that we know that it is a uh, ampere turns of the field winding at full load. So we can substitute product of IFTF as a uh, TFL that is a uh, as I said ampere turns of the field winding and it is known at very initial stage we have calculated and it is known. So if uh, we substitute IF is equal to field current and uh, TF that is number of turns in each field coil. So if we substitute this value then EF that becomes equal to ATFL multiplied by rho multiplied by LMTF and divided by AF. So based on this equation now all the quantities are known we know or we have rather uh, estimated our uh, full load ampere turns of the field MMF, the rho that is the resistivity of the copper winding, LMTF we have just uh, 
with the one empirical uh, formula we have calculated so now based on this equation it is very simple that uh, we can able to calculate uh, cross section area of the field conductor and that is equal to atfl multiplied by rho multiplied by lmtf and divided by ef ef that is voltage across each field coil and that we have calculated with one different equation that is 0.8 to 0.85 times excitor voltage and divided by number of poles so this way cross section area of the field conductor is calculated so af that is area of field conductor in millimeter square and the rho it is a resistivity and normally we use copper so resistivity of the copper material can be taken so uh, now uh, our next step that is uh, to calculate total number of field conductor so total first we calculate total area of the field conductor based on the cross section area we have just uh, calculated of the field conductor and by assuming a suitable value of current density we can easily able to calculate total area of the field conductor so that is equal to total field ampere conductor and divided by current density so that is equal to 2 times atfl multiplied by p and divided by delta f where delta f that is field current density normally it is taken around 2.5 ampere per millimeter square for conventionally cooled machine and it can be taken as high as 9.5 to 14 ampere per millimeter square for a modern type of turbo alternator which is a directly equipped machine so now total number of field conductor can be again calculated with the help of this equation this ratio rather total area of field conductor and divided by area of each conductor so we can take as a 2 atfl multiplied by p and divided by af multiplied by delta f and at last total number of field conductor per slot we have just calculated the total number of field conductor by the equation so based on this we can able to calculate total number of field conductor per slot so that is 2 times atfl multiplied by p divided by af multiplied by delta f and multiplied by sr and sr that is a number of wound rotor slot so this way we can able to calculate uh, total number of field conductor per slot so i think i stop here this is a we have calculated entire parameters of the rotor winding or field winding for the cylindrical type of rotor in our next lectures we will further design our turbo alternator so thank you thank you for watching my video keep watching thank you very much